this is Tom from anti-proton.com and there are kids coming so I'm moving away because kids are annoying. Well anyway, <clears throat> basically put Geiger counters come in all shapes and sizes. The size of the tube does count. The tube size determines how many events it will detect and you need to take that into account. Also the distance. There's the inverse square rule. If you take a Geiger counter and put it really close to something it will read really heavily because the little point shoots a lot right into it. But if you move it far enough away it spreads out like a ray. Remember radiation? And as it spreads out, you get less and less radiation being, uh, impacting the um, bulb. It's like, it's like light expanding from a light bulb. The farther you get away, the less intense it is. Same rule. So as a result, you will see less and less radiation as you get farther and farther away from the source. To check something, stand within a meter of it, read, read your uh, readings, and then check it again later on. Now, what is safe? Well, the problem is, is there's laws and rules and etc. If I were to tell you what, I, what is safe, then somebody else could come back later and say, well, I don't think that's safe. He told you it was safe and it wasn't. Okay, so let's make it really simple. I consider myself to be a relatively well-informed individual. I believe that anything under one count, 100 counts per minute for a geiger Mueller tube about an inch and a half in size at about a one meter's distance is safe. That's what I believe for me. If you choose to follow what I choose to say, then there you go, there's your legal disclaimer for you. So I would safely say anything under 100 is fine. Realistically speaking, anything under 1,000 for short exposure is probably not going to hurt you, not too much. But it's a time-based thing. It's like alcohol. How much alcohol will hurt you? Same question, really. You could sit down and drink a shot every day for the rest of your life and probably be perfectly healthy. Because even though it's alcohol and it adds up to a whole bunch over time, it's not happening all at once. As you start to have one more shot, so two a night, then three a night, then four a night, you'll start to have a cumulative effect which will become statistically noticeable after a while. These are all chronic doses. That's what chronic radiation dose is. If you went and lived in a place like uh, Fukushima for a long time, your chance of cancer could go up because of chronic exposure which gives you a slightly increased dose over time. An acute dose is different. An acute dose is what happens if you get blasted with it right now. Acute doses either do something or they don't to you right then and there. And over time they can cause damage. So if I sit down and I only had a shot once a day every day, that's perfectly safe. But if I then one day sit down and drink a whole freaking fifth of liquor, I would have a statistical chance that's pretty decent of being hurt by that. That could hurt me. Now, will it hurt me? It's hard to say. Some people could drink the whole fifth and nothing bad would happen to them. Other people in the hospital with uh, acute alcohol uh, poisoning. Same with the radiation. Some people I could give them a humongous dose of radiation, let's say 100,000 counts per minute for an hour and they'd walk away and live the rest of their life happily. Other people would vomit their guts out. Some people could even die, well maybe not from 100,000 counts, but you get the point. Same effect. So that's one, one other reason it makes it very difficult to know what's safe. Now, as for the doses you hear about on TV, millisieverts, microsieverts, sieverts, that sort of thing, sievert is, is a, a unit that's used often by scientists and probably not very useful for the average layman who's walking around. Um, <clears throat> basically put, anything under maybe 100 microsieverts is relatively safe for short term. There are many cancer treatments they'll give you like for thyroid and stuff that will uh, give you as much as that. If you look up BioNerd 20, what is it, not BioNerd 23, she gets technetium 99 ther therapy on her thyroid and she puts a Geiger counter and shows you. The doctor gave her this stuff and it's putting off 100 uh, mic uh, microsieverts just about from right around her neck. So that's a short term dose. But over time you wouldn't want to be around that. You wouldn't want to live around that your whole life. It would kill you eventually. So, you get your new Geiger counter, you pull out of the box, you let it sit for a while, you check it statistically, you leave it for a while, a couple hours, and let it see, you know, develop a good baseline, a good average. And you notice you're getting 20 counts per minute around your house, so well, that's probably fine. If you're living in Denver, you're getting 60 or 50. If, you're in the, if, you're, if you go up one mile into the air on top of a mountain, and then you put your Geiger counter right up against a piece of granite, you know, like that never happened, then you might be getting as high as low, who knows, 124 counts per minute, if anybody gets the reference. But the point is, um, 
that's still probably safe. You could build a house there and probably live out your whole life quite safely. All right, now, what is a safe dose? Or, excuse me, what is a safe exposure? A safe exposure is probably anything under 100 counts per minute on most Geiger counters. I think we can probably all agree. I will say officially the usual party line, which is call your call and consult your doctor. Only you know what the safest amount is to be around. How the hell that's supposed to happen? I don't know. Uh, you know, limit your exposure. Blah blah blah. So that's the official thing I'm going to tell you. The unofficial I'm going to tell you is that I consider anything under 100 to be relatively safe. I practice the policy of exposing myself as little as conceivably possible. I make sure to wash my hands and never allow myself to be in a situation where I could ingest or inhale any of it whatsoever, and then that is relatively safe, as far as I'm concerned. And I would consider myself somebody who knows enough to probably know that. Although I would like to point out that I am not actually a scientist, although I'm going to be going back for my master's degree in physics, but I'm not actually a scientist, technically speaking. Technically. So, well, I'm a computer scientist. So. But I did stay at a Holiday Inn last uh, Holiday Inn last night. God, I had to say I'm probably going to get sued by Holiday Inn now. All right. Anyway, well, I actually do have a tendency to stay there sometimes when I'm on on business trips. Creepy, huh? Anyway, so that's my little doodle on radiation. Hopefully, it's explained a little bit to you, and you have a bit, a little bit better of an idea what a safe dose is. I got to stop saying dose. Safe exposure. Dose is a much more complicated mathematical calculation. Do you ever tell you how I don't like dogs? Hear that behind me? That's why I don't like dogs, because they don't shut up. And they have to all be as loud. Look at me, I'm a dog. Oh my god, you're a dog too? Wow, bark, bark, bark. Okay, so that's Tom from anti-proton.com. Anti-proton.com, go there. I have all the radiation listings for the last couple of... Uh, uh, for the last month up on the site now, you can click a link. If you go up to the top, it says uh, current radiation or something like that at the very top. Click on it, and underneath the YouTube video that you'll see listed in there, you'll see a couple links. One shows you current data. The other one shows you all the data from April 1st through 15th, and I'm working on compiling April 16th through well, today. That'll be the next piece I put up there. I'm trying to compile it. It takes a while because I have, I don't know, uh, 15,000 lines of data for you to look at, all kinds of stuff. So go there, take a look. If you like my videos, click the like button. I love it when you click the like button. Check the other three, uh, the other two parts of this series. Tell me what you think, ask me questions, I'll get to it. I have a busy work week, so it may be a day or two, but please ask me questions. I like questions, I love answering questions. All kinds of crazy, creepy questions, and if you're like a physicist, don't come in here and give me crazy questions just to see if you can stump me. Who knows, you probably will, because I'm a, you know, I, I don't really have a lot of time to figure out your stuff. But anyhow, uh, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye.